Well, hello. Welcome to the Essence of Emerald, and I'm Emerald Lagasse. And today we're going to put some new spins on cheesecakes. See, I've got this reputation for not only being a big cheesecake fan, but also the cheesecake king. Well, you'll see why in a few minutes, because a long time ago from one of my good friends, Laura Brody, actually started doing some spins a little over 10 years ago on cheesecakes and sweet and savory and all kinds of cheesecakes and realize that you can do more with cheesecake than just fill it up with cherries. So, this cheesecake that we're going to do right here, a sweet cheesecake, is actually um, my brother-in-law, Mike Tongi. That's right, in Louisiana. He would just go crazy if he knew I was making this right now. And hopefully, he's watching this so he can make me one. But this is an unusual cheesecake because I'm using two types of cheeses in this. Cream cheese and goat cheese. You see, at the restaurant, since I opened Emeralds and back in Commander Palace days, I actually buy goat's milk and make our own goat cheese at the restaurant at Emeralds. That's right. And uh, this is a fabulous dessert, so let's go jump right into it and make this goat cheese cheesecake. You know, when you're making a cheesecake, you have to have a great crust. So, I've got a little bit of fine ground graham crumbs. I'm gonna put that right in the pan, just like that. And I have some butter that I've melted. And we're gonna take that melted butter and those crumbs, and we're gonna actually just Make it right here. Now we want to make sure that we sort of dissolve and get that butter mixed into all of those graham cracker crumbs. And you can see the technique that I'm doing. In my locked spring form pan, there we go. Now, you heard me say spring form pan. There's one baking pan that you have, make the investment in, go and get yourself a spring form pan. That's this thing right here. It has the bottom and the spring loaded actually so that you can close it and open and the bottom comes out. Well, you'll see later on. But to form this crust, I'm gonna use my hand now and sort of press on the bottom evenly and make this crust. And one of the other tips that I also have for you in making this crust is that you should, you should put a little lip, or what I call a lip, just sort of kind of going up the side of the pan, if you will, right there. You see that? You kind of want that to go up the side of the pan all the way around, and we'll get that great, that great crust. Now, for the filling, watch how simple this is. I've got a little log here of goat cheese, or chev. That's right, chev. And we just want to take the goat cheese and sort of crumble it. You see the texture of that? It's not as wet. It's really quite, uh, quite delicious, goat cheese, one of my favorite cheeses. And the other tip for you is with cream cheese, you should make sure that the cream cheese stays out at room temperature. And the reason for that is, is that if you work right out of the ice box with your cream cheese, what's gonna happen is you're gonna get these little lumps, these little white lumps, if you will, and uh, they don't make the cheesecake very attractive. So you wanna make sure that you uh, leave it out at room temperature for, oh, maybe about an hour would be good. And the other tip is that the first thing you want to do before assembling the cheesecake is you want to make sure that you properly blend it, make it really good and smooth. And I'm using a handheld mixer. You want to get all that cream cheese and the goat cheese, you want to get it really good and smooth. That's a major tip for you in having a good consistency in your cheesecake. 
Once you get it smooth, then we're going to add the juice of a lime. That's right, a lime. And a little bit of vanilla. A little lime and a little vanilla. Now, some people like to have a little peel, a little citrus peel inside of their cheesecake. If you like a little citrus, either orange or lime, uh, you get yourself a zester and you can just zest some peel and also the oil from the peel when you zest the f that also flavors as well the cheese. I've got a couple of eggs and then we've got to make this thing sweet so I'm going to add some sugar. And then we're going to just with our handheld mixer we're going to mix all of these ingredients. And you want to make sure that that sugar and the eggs, all that cheese is really good and smooth. Make sure that sugar is well dissolved inside of your filling. And when you have it in there now, you see, you see the texture of that? I'm going to show you real quick. That's right. You see the texture of that, how smooth it is? We'll pour that right inside of our crust. And then we're going to go right inside the oven. And the oven's on about 350 degrees. And we want to bake this for, it's about an hour, an hour and 10 minutes, 350 degrees. Now, I want to tell you something also that a lot of people always think with cheesecakes that you need some t uh, what they call a water bath or a water pan to bake your cheesecake. Well, it's very hard with a spring form pan. And also, I don't really agree with that. No water bath. Just going to go right inside of the oven. About an hour, an hour and five minutes, we're going to check it. Golden brown. And... Uh, I don't believe in the water bath. I think with a spring form pan, dry oven, perfect cheesecake. Well, speaking about perfect cheesecake, you're going to see when we come back. And I'm also going to show you how to do a savory cheesecake. So stay with me on the Essence of Emerald. Well, welcome back. So you can't beat a better dessert than that goat cheese cheesecake, but now I'm going to make a little savory cheesecake for you. One of my favorite, one that was on the first, the very first menu at Emerald's when we opened. Uh, I'm very proud of it. I love it. I think the flavors work well. The, the crust is savory as well, and that's a little smoked salmon cheesecake. And uh, speaking about crust, I have some breadcrumbs. That's right, some breadcrumbs. And uh, I'm going to put that in my bottom of my spring form pan. Also some butter. And I'd like to add a little bit of Parmesan cheese. A little Parmesan cheese, nice flavor. And then we'll make our savory crust. in our spring form pan. Now, when we were away, I took a little bit of onion, bell pepper, green bell pepper, and red bell pepper that was chopped up, a couple of cups, uh, assortment. I like a little bit more onion. And I just sauteed those in a little bit of olive oil, a little salt and pepper. And uh, we're letting those cool right now, and I'm going to show you why. Now, when all of the breadcrumbs, parmesan, butter is mixed, what we're going to do is then we press and we mold our crust, just like a sweet crust, except this one's a savory. And don't forget that lip that I was telling you about. Press it right down into our spring form pan, and then it's time to make the filling. 
What we're going to use now is I have some cream cheese that I've left out at room temperature. Remember that? So that little tip that I was telling you about. I also, for this one, am going to use a little bit of smoked Gouda cheese. I think the smokiness of the grated smoked Gouda cheese is just delicious. And what we're going to do is we're going to blend that up sort of low speed in our mixer or handheld mixer. We're going to get that, as I said earlier, nice and creamy. And while that's creaming up, this is smoked salmon. And we had it at the market. We want to cut it in nice chunks. I mean, not too small, but not too big. Remember, you only want it really as big as, you know, you want to put something in your mouth. Kind of chop it up. You can tear it with your hand. I like just using a knife. Saves a little bit of time. But you see that? Now look, there's also a lot of other smoked fish out there. Smoked trout. And smoked whiting. A lot of great, a lot of smoked fishes. Use the one that you like. But just remember one thing. When you're doing a savory cheesecake with smoked fish, this is smoked salmon. It's not not uh, the lox type that marinated it has a lot of oil. You see, there's no oil here. It's just the fish. Because we're still working with a formula with cheesecakes. Even though that it's savory, you want to make sure that the formula is right. So now, I'm going to uh, add our smoked salmon to our filling here. See how creamy that's looking right there? Hey, you may want to add more. You may want to add two or three types of fish. But I'm going to add the smoked salmon. And then I'm going to come over and take our vegetables that we had, the pepper and onions, and I'm going to add those in there. Smelling delicious already. OK. Then we're going to put that back on the mixer. Let it go for about a minute or so. Then actually what we're going to do is we're going to add just a little. I have about four eggs, three or four eggs depending on the size. Fresh eggs. And you want to slowly start adding the eggs in. Slowly start adding the eggs in. And the other tip for you This batter that we're making, the savory cheesecake batter, we have a formula. You can really kind of mix it up any way you, uh, that you want, that you like. Maybe you want to do a little crab cheesecake. Perhaps some, some Charisse cheesecake with some chicken on my friends in Fall River. Or maybe you want to do a mushroom cheesecake or an artichoke cheesecake. But. Let me show you this tip. When you're making the batter, you want to be able to, when you, after you add the eggs, you want to be able to scrape down the sides of the bowl because it's not fully incorporated, as well as the bottom. You want to make sure that it's all incorporated. And then, see that? Now we're getting a good, consistent batter. What we want to do now, once we blend this a little bit, We're going to add a little bit of cream. And you see, I'm adding the cream last for a reason. The reason why I'm adding the cream last is because I don't want the cream, whether it's whipping cream or whether it's heavy cream, I don't want to add it in the beginning because I don't want the cream to, to whip. What happens when you whip the cream? It becomes stiff. And then eventually, if you over whip the cream, it's happened to me before. It's going to turn to butter. You don't want to do that. So we add it right at the end. We're just going to give it the right consistency. And then what we're going to do, you can see that I used the beater instead of the whip on our machine, is we take our batter, savory batter,
Mmm. Little salt, little pepper. Hey, a little spice wouldn't wouldn't hurt. Now, you go run and set your oven 350, no more than 360 degrees. It's going to take about an hour, an hour and five minutes. A nice golden brown. And don't be sticking a toothpick in there. What did that cheesecake ever do to you? Leave that cheesecake alone. An hour, an hour and five minutes, and you're going to have a perfect, savory, smoked fish or smoked salmon cheesecake. When we come back, I'm going to show you some quick sauces, how to unmold it, and we'll finish those cheesecakes, and then we get to eat. So don't go away. We'll be right back on The Essence of Emerald. Hey, welcome back. And uh, our cheesecakes are out of the oven, smelling delicious in here. And spring form pans, let me show you a little tip about after you let them cool, and you should let them cool for at least about 30 minutes, just to be safe. You see the texture of the savory cheesecake, very firm, the golden that I was talking about. But to unmold them like that, you take a little paring knife or chef's knife and sort of go around the entire edge, the outer edge. And then when you do that, you want to wipe your, keep wiping your knife clean, working. You get your spring form and you unmold it. That's what I love about these pans. Look at that. We got this. This is the goat cheese cake. Now, after it's cooled, you want to cut a piece. You want to work with your knife clean. You know, you see the crumbs on that knife? If you don't clean your knife, what's going to happen is all those crumbs are just going to be on the side and it's going to look messy. We'll wipe our knife again. Then we'll get a little server, a little pie server, cake server. And we got a little wedge of our goat cheesecake. Mike, this is for you, my brother-in-law, Mike. Hey, how about some other garnishes with the savory cheesecake? You can do all kinds of vegetable sauces. And see, we're going to take a little bit of chopped onion. This is great for, for brunch, or even lunch, just with a little wedge of this, of smoked salmon cheesecake, perhaps, with a little green salad would be delicious. Then you could just sort of garnish it with a little more cheese, okay? Perhaps maybe a few capers you want to put on the side, all right? And uh, even maybe perhaps a little bit of fresh dill. Now for the sweet cheesecake, I'm going to whip up a quick sauce for you. I've got a little bit of sour cream, and I've uh, added just a tiny bit of vanilla to it, and a little puree of raspberry or whatever blackberry, blueberry, whatever you might have. And uh, you just sort of sweeten it. Maybe you want to add a little more sugar. We'll sort of mix that together. You can whisk it up. Or you just let it blend for a little bit. And then what you can do is you can actually just take a little bit of that and use it as a quick little sauce. Okay? Just a quick little sauce. And then you can actually take a little bit of that raspberry puree and Maybe you just want to do a little, a little finger painting. I love to paint with my fingers and look at that, okay? Just really quick and simple, really beautiful. Maybe we'll just do a little drizzle on that. And that's a little sauce for our sweet, our goat cheesecake. So today we did a little savory cheesecake of smoked salmon and uh, a great sweet cheesecake using Goat cheese. That's right, goat cheese. Uh, whether it's cheesecakes or any other recipes that, you, that you've seen on the essence of emerald. Well, I want to tell you one more thing about these savory cheesecakes. How about some lobster, some crawfish, 
or just a vegetarian cheesecake would be absolutely delicious with a little puree of vegetables. It's wonderful. And what makes it wonderful is, unlike just the cream cheese base, we used a little bit of smoked Gouda cheese. Or you could use some pepper jack cheese. And then the goat cheese in our goat cheesecake. Hey, folks, thanks for joining me today on the Essence of Emerald. We'll see you tomorrow. Cheesecakes, bye now.